Well, welcome to lesson 11 of our Bible First Principles series in preparation for baptism. And last week we started in a three-part series really of the subject of the spirits of the ancestors or the immortal soul or, or what happens to people after they die. And, and so today is the second part of that three-part series within this series of Bible First Principles. And we looked at last week how the, the, the subject of what happens to people when they die is a really important and an integral part of what God's, God's plan and purpose with the earth is all about. God wants us to understand that, that he, when, when we begin our life, when, when, when we're first born and we take our first breath, the period between our first breath and our last breath is the period of time that God wants to see what sort of people we are going to be, what sort of life we are going to live. And, and, and the Bible expresses this, this idea that life is the time to serve the Lord. And that when we breathe our last breath, that, that's the end of our life as we know it. And that there are no more memories, no more emotions, no more connection to the living. That we have no more place. And, and, and we looked at how, how the wise King Solomon in, in Ecclesiastes expressed those thoughts that, 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 that the dead have no place amongst the living and, and they play no part in the lives of those that live that live on and despite the great love and affection that we might have for people that have passed and, and, and have died they have no more connection with us they are a memory to us and I think that's the important thing for us to understand that though we might have a picture sitting on a on, on, on a mantelpiece or, or a picture on a wall of a loved one that's gone they are just a memory and they are good and normal and healthy and beautiful memories to, to remember those that have fallen asleep, to remember our mothers and our fathers, to our grandparents, to our children if they have passed away before us. They are wonderful and beautiful memories to have and to share. But that's all they are. They can't communicate with us and we can't communicate with them. They are not looking down upon us or, or mingling with us and mixing with us in, 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 in some form of afterlife. The Bible says and God says, this is, this is our heavenly father, this is the creator and sustainer of all the earth. He says, I want you to understand, as sad as it is, they have passed and they've had their life and they've had their time and their opportunity to serve God. And now it's time for for the living to continue to live their life in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to God. So we come to this second part of the series and, and I want to talk about this, this aspect of talking to people specifically after they're dead and all the supernatural aspects and particularly the connection between talking with people, communicating with people, taking advice from people. The word of God concerning talk to the dead is very, very clear. And it's very, very clear about two issues in particular. First is that when a person is dead, they have no ongoing life or part of their life or some ability in some way to contact the living. That's the first thing. A dead person has no ability at all to contact the living. And the second, and this is really the, the main focus, I suppose, of our, of our subject today, the second is that witchcraft, that sorcery, that divination, that soothsayers or fortune tellers, that they are an abomination to God, that God hates that sort of thing. Because nobody can tell the future. None of us can. You know, even our Lord Jesus Christ, when he walked on the earth, he did not know the day that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to be sent back to the earth. He didn't know the exact date of the kingdom of God. He didn't know what the future held in that aspect. And neither can we. And neither can these people who are happy and prepared to often take your money to give you some advice about your lucky numbers or your future, or your, your future happiness in love or romance. I want you to follow me in this reading. And, 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 and this is a really key part of, of the message of God that we find in Deuteronomy 
chapter 18. And in Deuteronomy 18, and in verses 9 to 13, this is what God has to say. And this was, this was God speaking to the children of Israel as they prepared to go into the promised land. And today he speaks to us as we prepare, as we wait for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we prepare to go into the promised land. Because the kingdom of God is coming, and it's coming soon. And so we're preparing to go into the kingdom of God on this earth. This, this kingdom of God is going to fill the earth and, and, and we are being given an amazing promise of hope and eternal life. But it's conditional. It's conditional on us understanding and obeying God's ways. God says, I want you to obey me. Obey me and live, he says. Exactly what he said to Adam and Eve back in the garden. If you obey me, you'll live. If you disobey me, you'll die. And he's saying to us today, if you obey me, you'll live. And if you disobey me, you'll die. It's black and white. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and in verses 19 to 13, this is what God says. When you enter the land, and this is the message for us today, the land that your God is giving you, you must not learn the abhorrent practices of, of those nations around you. Now, what he's saying to us is, listen, as you prepare to go into the kingdom of God, as you're preparing your lives and waiting for Jesus to return, you can't be like the people all around you. You can't be like the nations who have false gods and false beliefs. He said, there must never, ever be found among you any who sacrifice his son or his daughter in the fire. Do you know, even the world today there are people who will still sacrifice children to a God of, 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 of whatever means. He says you must never, ever, ever sacrifice a son or a daughter in the fire. Anyone who practices, and here he goes, look at this list. Anyone who practices divination or is an omen reader or is a soothsayer, or is a sorcerer, or is one who casts spells, or is one who conjures up spirits, who is a practiser of the occult, who is a necromancer, that's the word in my Bible, we'll talk about that shortly, whoever does those things is abhorrent, we are told, is abhorrent to the Lord. And because of these detestable things, the Lord your God is about to drive them out from before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Now, God is saying here, look, if, if, if you want to go into the kingdom of God, if you want to inherit the earth that I have prepared for you, that I want you to have rulership and dominion. If you want to be a part of my kingdom, you must never do these things. And he has that list of things that he says, I don't want you to have any part of this. I don't want you to be a part of divination. I don't want you to be part of soothsayers, of sorcery, of necromancer, of underworld spirits, fortune tellers, sangomas. He says, I don't want you to have anything to do with the ideas and the thoughts of the supernatural. Because it's all below me. It's, it's, it's just rubbish, he says. They can't tell you the future. They can't tell you that, he says. And he says, so, so for you to believe that sort of rubbish is an insult to me. And in fact, he says, it's, it's abhorrent to me. He says, I, I actually hate it. He says, if, if you want to do things that I hate, you go ahead. You have freedom of choice. But just understand, God says, I hate it. And I won't have any part of you. So stop this nonsense about trying to understand the future. Stop this idea of trying to talk and communicate with dead people. Stop this idea of, 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 of trying to have lucky numbers or reading the signs and the stars so that you can become a wealthy or, 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 or a better person. He says, don't do that. In fact, in First Chronicles, in chapter 10, and in verses 13 to 14, it says, 
that Paul, that, 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 that Saul, it says, so Saul died because he was unfaithful to Yahweh or to Jehovah. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord and did not obey the Lord's instructions. He even tried to conjure up the underworld spirits, says 1 Chronicles chapter 10. He did not seek the Lord's guidance, so the Lord killed him and transferred his kingdom to David, the son of Jesse. You see, Saul got so desperate to have answers about what the future is, he, he went to a witch doctor. He went to a sorcerer. He went to a person who, who, who claimed that they could speak to the dead. And God condemned Saul as he tried to conjure up these underworld spirits, as he tried to talk to the dead. Of all the wrong things that Saul did in his life, the Bible highlights this sin, this one of, of trying to communicate with the dead. He, he, it's rated as the, as the worst sin that Saul committed. Imagine that. The last verse of, of 1 Chronicles 10 says in, in verse 14, Saul did not seek the Lord's guidance, so the Lord killed him and transferred his kingdom. You see, we are given a choice. Again, this, this, this choice of to obey or to disobey. That's the choice that we are given. To obey God and live or disobey God and die. God will take his breath away from us with a click of the fingers if he chooses. But the choice is ours, God says. You can choose to serve me, or you can choose to, to serve other gods, other ways. You can choose to go to your Sam Gomers, your fortune tellers, your witch doctors. But God reserves the right to punish those who disobey him. Now, because that, that section in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse to 19, uh, verses uh, 9 to 13, is important, and there's some big words in there, I just want us to understand clearly what's being said. Now, we've spoken before about how the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. So when we look at the Hebrew words for some of these things, it's very interesting. For example, the word divination. The Hebrew word means a diviner of divinations. And this was used to try and determine the future, to find out what was going to happen in the weeks and the months and even the years ahead. People are, people are fascinated with knowing, am I going to have a long life? Am I going to have a happy life? Am I going to have a sad life? Am I going to find love? Am I going to have children? Am I going to be wealthy? Am I going to get a good job? And people are absolutely fascinated with knowing what their future is instead of living their life and making the best of the life that they are given. You know, we are given the ability to control our circumstances, our own circumstances, our own life. You know, I look at my own life as an example. I was hopeless at school. I was really hopeless at school. And, 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 and I didn't do very well in any of my studies and any of my exams at school. But the person who's to blame for that is me. I, I can't ever really remember studying. I can't remember doing school homework. I can't remember doing anything to prepare myself for my future. So it was no surprise that when I finally got to the end of my school time, that the school said, you haven't done very well, you haven't got very good marks, and you're not going to get a very good job. And the only person I can blame for that is myself. And so what point is there in me going to a, a diviner or a fortune teller and say, I wonder what my future is going to be? I knew what my future was going to be. And so when I left school, the only job that I could get was washing cars. And so I became a car washer because I'd failed to use the time and the opportunity that I was given when I could have done better. I could have made a better life for myself. I could have made a better future myself if I had have studied harder at school, if I had have done my homework. 
But I didn't do that. And so for the rest of my life, my life was a battle. It was a struggle. Now, I'm, I'm very fortunate and very blessed that God was in my life through all those struggles. And so eventually I was able to get out of the car wash and get a nice office job. And again, through the blessings of God, not through any fortune telling or anything like that, I was able to create a reasonable life for myself and meet a, a, a lovely young lady and have some beautiful children and some grandchildren. But there was no point in going to a diviner to know what the future was because you create your own future. If you save your money, even if you only have a little money, if you save your money when you need to buy something that is urgent, you'll have money. But if you spend your money every week and, and, and you enjoy life and, 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 and you like to drink a glass of beer or, or like to go out to, to, to go do a bit of shopping or, or spend it in, in other things, when the time comes to have some money, you won't have it because you've spent it having fun somewhere. So diviners can't tell you the future. God says that. We create our own future. Soothsayers, that word soothsayer there, it means a seeker of omens. So we're always looking for good signs. It's like, you know, they, they say, you know, don't walk under a ladder because that's bad luck. But, or don't walk in front of a black cat. You know, or you might see something that that, 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 that that you think is a lucky sign. You might see a shooting star and say, hey, that's a good sign. I've seen a shooting star. And so people are always looking for signs, both good and bad. If I see a black cat, I walk the other way. But if I see a shooting star, I get all excited. But, but whether a black cat or a shooting star happens in front of me, that's not going to change my future. God is in control of my life. And we determine our future because God says, I give you a choice. I give you free will. The free will to obey me or disobey me. And so in my life, I, I try to allow God to guide my life. And, and, and even though I have God in my life, I have bad days, I have very bad days. But I also have good days and very good days as well. But I don't rely on a soothsayer or I don't rely on signs and omens because God says it's just rubbish. He said, because you could be standing next to a very, very bad person. You could be standing next to, next to a thief, to, to, to a person who, 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 who's a liar, to a person who's jealous, to a person who, who, who could be a terrible person. And what if he sees the, the, the same shooting star as you do? Does he say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm a lucky guy? God plays no part in those things. And a necromancer means a seeker of the dead. It's a witch doctor who tries to tell you that I can speak to your mother or your father and I can get advice from them. And God says, I hate that. I hate people who, who pretend to talk and communicate with the dead. And there's no doubt sometimes we, 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 we think that we, we, we imagine things in our, in our minds and in our, in our sleep and in our dreams. And all that's a part of just the life that we live. But if, if your mother or your father or your grandmother or your grandfather are dead, they're not communicating with you. You might be thinking about them in your subconscious. You might remember that your grandmother gave you some good advice and that's fantastic but they're not communicating with you. God says in Romans chapter 6 and in verse 23, the wages of sin is death. The payment, the salary that we earn for doing wrong things is death. It's the end. And the gift of God is eternal life, a gift that God will give us when his son comes back and we need to trust him in those things not depend on fortune tellers not reading our signs or our stars and thinking we're in for a lucky day or a bad day but put our faith and our trust in god that's what he wants us to do and if we do those things 
we will have a blessed life. Not necessarily an easy life, but we'll have a life with God and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's the most important thing, because when Jesus returns, He's going to say, come here, let me put my arms around you, you good and faithful servant. So until we meet again, God be with you, God bless you, God keep you, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now. God bless.